the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up, it's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind cause it's everything You can mold shape by Forest 5 inch FPV quadcopter build tutorial. In the previous video, we built the line of sight version of this quad and went over the steps involved in assembling the frame, installing the electronics, and the complete ESC and beta flight configuration. In this video, we will carry out the analog FPV modification by adding a camera, a 5.8 GHz video transmitter, and an antenna for the VTX. Let's also add a GPS module and upgrade the radio link to Express LRS. I will design and 3D print some parts for our quad, like a GoPro base mount and some arm guards. After the build is completed, we will bind the radio with the receiver and then configure beta flight using a PC. So let's get right into it without further ado. It's finally time to upgrade to the ELRS radio link for high reliability and long range. Make sure to cover the module with clear heat shrink tubing or tape to provide insulation and allow us to see the LED status. Let's start off by sliding the 3D printed RX antenna plate to the bottom of the front standoffs and apply plugs to the pre tin pads dedicated to the receiver at the front of the flight controller. Now let's connect the RX of the receiver to TX2 on the FC, TX of the receiver to RX2 on the FC, voltage input to the 4.5 volt pad and ground to ground. This will allow us to power up the receiver through USB without having to plug in a LiPo battery. It's always recommended to use a cotton swab dipped in isopropyl alcohol to clean up the soldering work. Now let's twist the wires together to reduce electromagnetic interference and then secure the receiver to a suitable place on the frame. Secure the RX antenna to the plate using a couple zip ties. Moving the antenna away from the carbon fiber will significantly improve reliability and the range of the radio link. We will carry out the rest of the soldering work by following the standard operating procedure involving pre-tinning the pads, applying flux, soldering the pre-tinned wires to the pads and then cleaning up with IPA. Connect the voltage input of the GPS to the 4.5V pad on the FC and connect the ground to a ground pad. Ensure that the RX from the GPS goes to the T6 pad and the TX from the GPS goes to the R6 pad on the FC. Connect the SDA and SCL of the GPS to the SDA and SCL pads on the flight controller. 
The GPS can now be powered up through USB, which will be very helpful in attaining a 3D lock without having to power up the entire quad, which will drain the battery and overheat the VTX while waiting for the 3D fix. Connect the voltage input of the video transmitter to the 9V pad on the FC and ground to ground. The video input of the VTX is connected to the VTX pad on the FC and the VTX control such as Smart Audio or IRC Tramp is connected to T1 on the FC. Don't forget to use the magical liquid to clean up the soldering joints on the board. For the FPV camera, I chose the Foxia Racer V2 Mini. It offers great low light performance and is claimed to have 1200 TVL. We'll mount this to the 3D printed camera adapter using a couple M2 by 12 mm and 4 mm screws. I've designed the adapter to allow 0 to 30 degrees of up tilt and also provide protection to the lens. Slide the adapter over the front standoffs and ensure to move the RX antenna's cable into the recess provided in the adapter and the antenna plate. Now let's connect the camera cable from the FC to the 3 pin slot on the back of the camera. Ensure that the wiring order matches the pinout on the camera. Ok, I didn't like how the camera and the RX antenna protruded too far out of the frame. So I designed another plate for the RX antenna and an adapter for the camera. Now the components are pulled closer to the frame and less vulnerable to damage. Note that the new camera adapter uses M2 by 8mm and 4mm screws instead of 12mm and 4mm ones on each side. It's time to print some parts for the rear end of the frame. I am using black PLA from Eason to print these since I only have TPU in blue, ABS in white and pink which won't adhere to the color scheme of this build. I'll of course be printing all the parts again with black TPU since it's the apt material to be used in applications that require vibration damping and heat resistance. The Voxnail M181 is a very tiny 18mm GPS plus compass module that runs on the latest M10 U-Blocks engine. This module locks onto 8 satellites within a minute on hot start and 30 satellites within the next few seconds. Slide the GPS mount over the rear standoffs while pulling on the battery cable and fish out the GPS cable through the holes on the mount. Plug in the connector to the GPS module, remove the backing from the heavy duty double sided tape and stick the module to the GPS mount. Ensure that the ceramic antenna is facing upwards. Since the GPS module is the savior of our drone in case of a fail safe, we'll take extra precautions by securing it to the mount with a zip tie. Slide the 20mm spacers over the standoffs behind the stack and then mount the VTX adapter on the four rest standoffs. The HTLRC's use is a great bank for the bug video transmitter that has a maximum output power of 800 milliwatts, which is more than sufficient to provide 3 to 4 kilometers of video range. It uses the IRC tramp protocol that allows us to control the settings such as power, band and channel on beta flight and with our radio through the OSD on the goggles. Now place the VTX on the adapter and secure it with 4 M3 by 8 mm screws. The M3 mounting holes on the adapter are undersized to allow the screws to thread into them. Plug the cable from the FC to the VTX and ensure that the wiring order is correct. Let's pass a 2.5 inch long MMCX2 SME female pigtail through the VTX antenna pigtail mount and secure it with a split washer and a nut. Carefully pass the pigtail through the battery cable and plug it into the MMCX connector on the VTX. Beware that this will take some force and it's completely normal. Slide the mount over the rest standoffs and we can move on to the next steps. It's time to secure the top plate to the rest of the frame using 8 M3 by 6 mm screws. We can now add the VTX antenna to the pig's tail. I'm using the iFlight Albatross RHCP antenna with an SMA male connector. Ensure that the connector is tightly fastened. Now is a good time to connect a smoke stopper in series with the power source and the ESC. It basically serves the purpose of a fuse. Let's plug in a 3S LiPo battery to the smoke stopper and hope that it works. I'm glad that everything is in order and nothing went up in flames. We can now remove the smoke stopper and won't need to use it again until we have made some changes to the wiring. Place a 3D printed arm protector on the bottom side of an arm and align the holes. We'll be using M3 by 8mm screws for this specific combination of arm protector, arm thickness and motors. 
Now remove these four screws from the front of the top plate and place the GoPro mount. Use four M3 by 8mm screws to secure the mount to the frame and ensure that you don't over tighten them, which may cause damage to the top face of the mounting holes. Attach a couple pieces of standard double sided tape to the top plate, which will serve as a cheap yet creepy battery pad. Remove the protective backing and dab up the adhesive surface with the cloth if you wish to reduce its stickiness. Now, let's pass a velcro battery strap under the top plate and loop it up. With this step, we are done with the build process if mounting propellers is not considered as one. All that's left to do now is set up our radio and go through the revised beta flight configuration before taking this out for its maiden flight. I always prefer to use a binding phrase to bind my transmitter to the receiver, but I'll show you how to manually carry out the binding process in this chapter. Hold down on the power button for 4 seconds and then release it to turn on the radio. Push the throttle stick all the way down to get rid of the throttle warning. We will have to power cycle the receiver twice to send it into binding mode. This can be easily done by connecting a power bank to the flight controller and using it as a switch to conveniently turn the receiver on and off. A rapidly blinking orange light indicates that the RX has entered binding mode. We can now go into the systems menu and access the Express LRS page. Scroll down till you find the bind option. Click on it and patiently wait for the binding process to get completed. A solid light indicates that the controller and receiver are successfully bound. Click on the return button to refresh the page. We can now change some settings as per our preference. I like to set the packet rate to 150Hz and set the power to 25mW. I decided to upload the beta flight configuration as part 3 of this build series since I realized that it would make this video too long. It's almost a 10 minute long chapter that involves detailed explanation of the GPS rescue configuration. For the props and setup, mount clockwise propellers on the rear right and front left motors. Mount counterclockwise propellers on the rear left and front right motors. I'm using the Ethix P4 5 inch candy cane props. It's safe to say that these are my most favorite props now, followed by the Gemfan 51466. Screw the lock nut onto the shaft and ensure that it is absolutely tight. Your prop should not be able to rotate if the motor bell is held in place and vice versa. I like to use a ratchet to make this process a lot quicker and easier. I also like to use a napkin to hold the bell and props in place while tightening the lock nut. The napkin provides grip and also helps in keeping my hands safe from the sharp edges of the propellers. We're just one step away from the maiden flight now. Open the battery strap and place a 4S battery on the Make 2 Grippy pads. I'll be using the CNHL Black Series 1300mAh 100C LiPo for the maiden flight. Loop up the strap and ensure that it's tightly holding down on the battery. We can get away with a single strap for now but it would be wise to double up. Now that we're all set up, let's take this beauty out to the field and send it. the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm funded play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so I can make a better me better believe in your mind cause it's everything you can mold shape find
trash And if you get in my way, you're gonna feel the wrath Gotta say it to my face while he's looking back Mirror breaks after math When I hate, I attack I'm a mortal. When I feel like this, I'm a mortal.